Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS, presenting to you the daily quiz for 27th June 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Which of the following statements with respect to ethanol blending of petrol is or are correct? Statement number one, it ensures thorough combustion of fuel as ethanol is high in oxygen content. Statement number two, it will solve the problem of agricultural waste. Statement number three, India has set a target of 20% ethanol blending in petrol by 2030. What is the context? There is a reference to ethanol blending in this article in the Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper today. Ethanol blending is the practice of blending petrol or diesel with ethanol. Ethanol is a biofuel, that is, a fuel produced by processing organic matter. In India, it is obtained primarily from sugarcane molasses. Ethanol blending with petrol and diesel is preferred as it burns cleaner and burns more completely than the fossil fuel it is blended into. Ethanol blending of petrol is preferred for various reasons. Number one, since ethanol is a biofuel, it is a renewable source of energy. Number two, it is expected to result in net reduction in emission of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and also hydrocarbons. Number three, this can also play a role in increasing farmers' income as they can sell the agricultural waste that can be used in ethanol production. Number four, it can help in reducing crude oil imports among many other benefits. Coming back to the question, statement number one is correct because high oxygen content in ethanol molecule improves the oxidation of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons in the fuel rich regions of combustion chamber and this ensures more complete combustion. Coming to statement number two. So far, ethanol was being produced in sugar growing states because it was mostly derived from sugarcane molasses as we discussed. But now it will be produced across the country as food grain waste distilleries and agricultural waste ethanol plants are being set up. Therefore, it will solve the problem of agricultural waste also to an extent. So this statement is correct. Statement number 3 is incorrect as the target has recently been advanced to 2025. India is promoting the use of E20 fuel. This is a blend of 20% ethanol with petrol. And India's target of 20% ethanol blending in petrol has been advanced by 5 years to 2025. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option A, 1 and 2 only. Moving on to question number 2. Which of the given statements with respect to Integrated Child Development Services Scheme is or are correct? Statement number 1. The beneficiaries of the program are children in the age group of 0 to 14 years of age, pregnant women and lactating mothers. Statement number 2. It is a central sector scheme under the Ministry of Women and Child Development. Statement number 3. It aims to provide preschool non-formal education to children. Why this question? An article in the Hindu newspaper today has a mention of the Integrated Child Development Services Scheme. The Integrated Child Development Services Scheme provides for supplementary nutrition, preschool and non-formal education, nutrition and health education, immunization, health checkup and referral services. So who are the beneficiaries of this program? To have a look at that, let us go back to the question. The statement number one says children in the age group of 0 to 14 years, pregnant women and lactating mothers are the beneficiaries of this scheme. The statement is partially correct because pregnant women and lactating mothers are beneficiaries while the children in the age group of 0 to 6 years of age are included under this scheme, making statement one incorrect. Statement number two is also incorrect because this is not a central sector scheme but is a centrally sponsored scheme. Centrally sponsored schemes are different from central sector schemes in a sense that central sector schemes are implemented by the center directly and are 100% funded by the union government. Whereas centrally sponsored schemes are implemented by the states. And ICDS is a centrally sponsored scheme under the Ministry of Women and Child Development. Statement number three is correct because in addition to improving the nutritional and health status of children, this scheme provides for preschool non-formal education to children between the age group of three to six years. 
Therefore, the right answer is option C, 3 only. Now moving on to question number 3. Which of the given statements with respect to green sea turtles is or are correct? Number 1. Global warming contributes to the feminization of green sea turtles. Number 2. They are found in tropical and subtropical seas around the world except for the Indian Ocean. Number 3. Their presence in seas help in providing a nursery for numerous species of fish, shellfish and crustaceans. Before we discuss this question, let us have a look at the context. This article in the Hindu newspaper talks about Australia's Great Barrier Reef that has been proposed to be added to UNESCO's list of world heritage in danger. The Great Barrier Reef is made up of a couple of thousand of individual reefs of Australia's northeastern coast. And the World Heritage Committee has said that the long-term state of ecosystem of Great Barrier Reef has gone from poor to very poor. The committee in the year 2019 had sent a letter to Australia raising concerns about Carmichael Coal Mine, which was a controversial project believed to have adverse impacts for the reef and the climate as well. However, Australia believes that the UNESCO committee is being pressurized by China on this issue because China holds the chairmanship of the panel. This article also has references to feminization of green turtles because of global warming or warm temperatures. Let us go back to the question to understand this. Statement number 1 says, Global warming contributes to the feminization of green sea turtles. Which is correct because studies have found that the sex of green sea turtle hatchlings is determined by temperatures. Warmer waters means more female turtles and this could threaten the species as climate change and global warming could lead to feminization of these species, leading to lesser male population of turtles. Now coming to statement number 2. Statement number 2 is incorrect because these turtles are also found in Indian Ocean in addition to other tropical and subtropical seas. Understand here that 5 species of sea turtles are known to inhabit Indian coastal waters and islands. And among these is also green sea turtle. The other being olive ridley, hawksbill, loggerhead turtle and leatherback turtles. Statement number 3 is also correct because... These green sea turtles feed on seagrass beds and by cropping the seagrass beds, they provide a nursery for variety of species of shellfish, fish and also crustaceans. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option B, 1 and 3 only. Let us take up another question from this article. Question number 4. Which of these UNESCO World Heritage Sites in India have been on the list of World Heritage in Danger? Group of Monuments at Hampi, Group of Monuments at Mahabalipuram, Manas Wildlife Sanctuary, Elora Caves, Sundarbans National Park. As per Article 11 Clause 4 of the World Heritage Convention, 53 properties across the world have been included on the list of World Heritage in Danger. This list aims to create awareness and also encourage counteractive measures. At present, none of the World Heritage Sites in India are in UNESCO's list of World Heritage in Danger. However, Hampi, which was once a part of this list, was removed from the list in the year 2006 and Manas Wildlife Sanctuary was removed from the Dangers list in the year 2011. So, so far, only these two heritage sites from India have been on the World Heritage in Danger list of UNESCO. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option D, 1 and 3 only. Now, let us have a look at the previous year question from prelims paper 2017. The term domestic content requirement is sometimes seen in the news with reference to option A, developing solar power production in our country, option B, granting licenses to foreign TV channels in our country, option C, exporting our food products to other countries, option D, permitting foreign educational institutions to set up their campuses in our country. First, let us understand what is this domestic content requirement. This was a category instituted to elevate India's status as a solar hub through indigenous production. It means the use of both solar photovoltaic cells and modules manufactured domestically as per the specifications and testing requirements fixed by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. 
and this was one of the types of non-tariff barriers. This requirement was contested by many countries at the World Trade Organization. Let us understand why this question was asked. Because in the year 2016, the World Trade Organization's appellate body declared domestic content requirements in India's Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission as illegal. And in the year 2015 also, the World Trade Organization's dispute panel had ruled that India's subsidies for solar power contravenes WTO trade rules and that India should remove the subsidies. India was also told that in case it fails to do so, it would have to face trade sanctions. So this was frequently in news in the year 2015 as well as 2016. The right answer would be option A, developing solar power production in our country. Let us move on to the fact of the day, which is multi-drug resistance bacteria. This article in the Hindu newspaper talks about multi-drug resistance in bacteria. This is based on a study conducted in the Population Biology Lab at Indian Institute of Science Education Research, Pune. Let us first understand what drug resistance in bacteria is. Most of the types of bacteria can be treated with antibiotics. And over time, some types of bacteria become resistant to certain antibiotics. This means that the antibiotic does not work to treat that particular bacteria. And another antibiotic will need to be used to treat that bacteria. So then what is multi-drug resistance? When a single bacterium is resistant to more than one antibiotic, it is said to be multidrug resistant. In technical terms, it is antimicrobial resistance shown by a microorganism to at least one antimicrobial drug in three or more antimicrobial categories. So what are the factors that are responsible for this resistance? Globalization, excessive use of antibiotics in animal husbandry as well as aquaculture, use of multiple broad-spectrum agents can be listed as the factors that are most responsible for the spread of antibiotic resistance. Large amount of antibiotics used for human therapy or for farm animals and also in aquaculture result in multidrug resistance in bacteria. This excessive use of antibiotics lead to bacteria becoming resistant or insensitive to multiple drugs and these bacteria can spread making treatment very difficult. So now when a bacteria becomes multi-drug resistant, its bacterial fitness also appreciates because it is adept in handling multiple antibiotics simultaneously. Bacterial fitness is the ability of a bacteria to replicate in a given environment. So if this was the case, then all bacteria must have become drug resistant. But this is not the case. One of the reasons why this does not happen is because of something called as fitness cost. Antibiotic resistance often generates defects in bacterial growth. And this defect is known as fitness cost. Understanding the cause of this fitness cost is very important because it is one of the major determinants of prevalence of resistances even when antibiotics use is reduced. Let us understand this. When a bacteria becomes fit in one environment, they either lose fitness or fail to increase fitness in another environment. But this Pune-based study says that when environment is fluctuating, large populations, remember, large populations of bacteria can bypass this effect. The study found that the small populations acquire a certain set of mutations which allow them to survive in one environment while paying cost in other environment. When it comes to large populations, they also develop these mutations. But in addition, they have certain compensatory mutations and this gives them the fitness to survive even in different environments. That is exactly why even when the environment is fluctuating, they bypass the effect of fitness cost when the population is large. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.